I got a new product from IT.cc, the makers of Sonoff, and this time it's the Sonoff Bridge. RF Bridge is a device which allows you to connect your 433 MHz RF devices with the EVLink application and control your other Sonoff devices and pretty much vice versa. So in this video I'm going to look at the RF Bridge itself, how to set it up, how to connect to EVLink application and I'm going to look at um, using this RF link with a couple of RF devices that I have at home. Some of these devices are supplied by IT as well. So for example, this motion sensor, this uh, door um, sensor, so this magnetic relay switch, and also I got this key fob from them. But I also have some other remotes, different key fobs, uh, this bigger key fob which controls five of these uh, mains relay. I also have a water leakage sensor which unfortunately doesn't work that was probably that on arrival uh, so i'm just going to discard that and i also have this really cheap uh, diy uh, 433 megahertz uh, relay that i will be using in this video the reason i'm using all these devices is because i just want to show that the son of bridge is not limited to only rf devices that i got uh, that are supplied by it but you can get your own RF devices. These were purchased from AliExpress and Banggood. Looking at other YouTube videos on the RF Bridge, it seems that uh, this unit has gone through a few design iterations because I have seen different physical form of this box. This is probably the latest one. So it's basically a black box. You have the Sonoff logo, which is going to light up blue when uh, it gets power. On one side, there is a pairing button. Yep. So there is a pairing button and a micro USB input to supply 5 volts for this unit. It is not supplied with any USB power plug or cables or anything, but you can use basically any phone charger that you have. I measured that this unit uses about 70 milliamps at 5 volts, so basically any old uh, mobile phone charger with a USB micro USB plug is going to be sufficient. Other than that, we have two LEDs on the top. There is a blue LED which it will indicate the Wi-Fi activity and there is an orange or red LED which is going to show uh, any of the RF activity. So here I'm using my own USB adapter and cable to power the Sonoff and I also have the EVLink application started. As you can see, the, the Sonoff bridge is not registered or not added to the EVLink application. So I'm just going to press the the pair button I'm using, uh, um, what is it, a toothpick or any pointy device is going to work. So just keep the button pressed for a couple of seconds until you see the quick flashing pattern on the blue light and I can start adding the device. So I do the pairing, I need to provide my Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password so I do that and I just do the normal pairing procedure that I would perform for any other son of device. So it's going to look for the RF bridge at the moment. Of course, you need to have the phone and the RF bridge close to each other and also relatively close to the router. So it receives the signal from the access point. And we can still already see the message that there is uh, found one device and it's doing the registration. So we just have to wait. Oh, it's already done. So I just need to rename the device, so I'm just going to call it RF Bridge. And then complete, and then yes, and then hopefully I can already see my RF Bridge. So that's how it looks like. And when you go into the device details, you have this uh, empty page or empty layout. And we are just going, I'm just going to go through the, the main settings here. So up here, when you click the, uh, the free buttons, you have the loop timer, the settings, and you can delete this uh, from your account. So it's exactly the same features that we see from other devices. You can see the, uh, the name, the RF bridge, it has the latest version, and this alarm history, which is going to send you an alarm whenever the, uh, any RF device sends a signal. I'm going to turn this off later on because it just gets too annoying after some time. We have the share button, the schedule button, and the countdown button, which works exactly the same as any other uh, Sonoff device, but we will see later that you can configure it per individual RF unit. 
And now what we are going to do, we are going to pair a device with the RF link. Okay, so I just moved the stuff around so everything is in shot. And now I'm going to pair the, the PIR sensor or the motion sensor. And the first step is to click on this add RF remote button on the lower right corner. And then you need to select the RF remote. And that's going to be a, an alarm type. And I'm going to uh, later on tell uh, the difference between all the, uh, all the different alarms. But obviously this is an alarm, so we are going to use the alarm. And now we have added a new alarm. So we just added like a new remote. It doesn't really know what the signal for or the command for this uh, remote is. So we are going to teach the RF link to recognize the, uh, this alarm or this PIR sensor. And to do that, you click on the icon, so this alarm icon, you uh, press and hold, and now you can see that the RF link, RF bridge is in pairing mode, so it is uh, waiting for a signal. So I just activate the PIR sensor. You hear a second beep, and that basically says that the, the PIR sensor is now um, paired with the RF bridge. And this is not doing too much at the moment, so it just basically sitting there showing you that you have one alarm uh, or one PIR sensor, motion sensor registered. And as soon as it triggers, you can see that it has triggered. Uh, you can see the blue light here, a blue light again. You can also see a flashing uh, orange on the RF bridge showing that it has received the signal. And you can see some stuff on the screen as well. So you, have, you see an update what was the latest alarm and you also get these messages which I really hate because they just become too much after some time so if you want to get rid of it you can just go to settings and then um, delete the alarm history it says alarm history but actually it, it removes these notifications and still you can come here to the, uh, the alarm history and you can see all these alarms the reason you see so many because um, I have actually done this uh, pairing process before, so probably it remembers these old, these previous alarms. And by the way, you can rename the device here. So I can just say PIR sensor. Okay, that's it. What about another one? Let me move this away and then let's use the door sensor. So again, the same procedure, out of remote. It's going to be an alarm as well and then OK. And then I click on the icon. As you can see, the icon at the moment is gray because it's not paired yet. So click and hold, activate the sensor, wait for the second beep, and now it's done. So let me remove this one. Sorry, rename. Door sensor. Fine. OK, so now we have two sensors. Let me add one more device. Uh, and that's going to be the uh, these main sockets and I have five of these main sockets one of them are here so it looks like this this is like a European standard uh, RF main socket and that's the remote for it so it has like five buttons uh, to control each of the the sockets turn them on and off so I'm going to add a new RF remote and I only have up to like four buttons here so I'm just going to use the four button one and uh, as you can see, I, I have the four buttons and I need to just pair them one by one. So if I click on this one, click. Sometimes you have to send a signal twice. If it doesn't work for the first time, then you send it again. Second one, done. Third one, done. Fourth one. Okay, so I have the four buttons and in fact you can register the fifth button by adding a new one button device and just uh, pair it like that. Before we go any further, let's look at the setup again. So I have my usual boards where I have the Sonoff Basic, the Touch, the T-Bone, the uh, TH10 mounted. I have the RF bridge here. I have um, two of the wall plugs, number one and two. Uh, connected which are operated by this remote and basically that that remote comes with the plugs so they are paired uh, by factory so I can operate number one and I can operate number two and I have a few other devices as well and the door sensor I don't have all of them here because uh, 
they pretty much work the same way. I mean, um, as far as the RF link concerns, it's just basically a trigger. And whether that is sent by a motion sensor or a door sensor or a key fob, it doesn't really matter. It, what really matters is how we configure them. And before we go any further, just one more thing, because you might ask, you know, why I need to bother with, uh, with the RF link uh, if I can just buy, you know, sort of basics or the touch and have those control any of my devices or all of my devices. Well, that, I can think of a couple of reasons. Uh, for example, if you have one of these uh, wall plugs uh, laying around at home, I mean, they are quite cheap. You can get them from any of the hardware stores and, and in Europe they also turn up in Aldi's and Lidl so they can be both quite cheap I mean this one came from Aliexpress so if you have these around you might as well just you know reuse them because uh, they work with the remote quite nicely but now you can add the RF link and you can control it over your smartphone as well so it just makes them let's say smarter uh, the other thing I can think of is that most of these devices, like uh, the PIR sensor, are battery powered. So they are quite convenient in places where you don't have wiring or you don't want to have wires. So for example, if you want to install a few more PIR sensors uh, and you can't get wires to those places, then a battery operated RF PIR sensor is going to be a good solution. These RF units are generally consume very little power, so they are ideal for battery operation. And not to mention that you have a lot more products, RF products, that you can buy from uh, you know, anywhere like Ali or Banggood than you have Sonoff devices. Also, one more thing, if you remember the Touch or the T1, if you want to install them in a normal wall socket where you have your regular switches, you need to have both neutral and, and live wires because that needs constant uh, 24, uh, 220 or 120 volts to operate. So again, if your house has all the wiring, you don't have uh, neutral in your wall sockets, you won't be able to use the touch. So you might want to use a son of basic and have that controlled by a, like just a general purpose RF switch or or you can also find and buy RF uh, switches which look like regular wall switch wall switches and probably one last reason I can think of is 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 range as far as I know Wi-Fi has a limited range and if you live in a big house you probably have noticed that um, in the furthest corner of your house you might not have Wi-Fi and especially on the son of devices which only have this really small PCB mounted antenna getting a proper Wi-Fi signal could be uh, an issue and these RF devices might outperform Wi-Fi devices in terms of range if you go back to the main screen you see the you have the RF bridge now and it's connected and you can click on these up and down arrows to operate the uh, to open up each of the like sensor or device within the RF bridge and so the one way to use the RF bridge is to control your old RF socket so for example I have this one here so that's already paired with the unit as I've shown you before I have already paired this unit with the RF bridge so I learn so this uh, the RF bridge learned the first four buttons and if I press the first button on the application then it sends out the signal what I would what, what this remote would also send out if I press number one and the first socket over there you can't really see the status light is really dim has turned on and if I press number two then well nothing really happens I'm guessing it's a little bit hit and miss and you really have to exper experiment with it and um, the way this remote is working is that it has a separate remote and, and therefore a separate code for on and off so <clears throat> If I turn remote number one off and if I press the button again, then it turns on. If I press the button again, then nothing really happens because the RF reach now only learns learned the on command for the socket number one. So I would need to create another set of four buttons uh, so I can train the off signals as well. And actually off camera I quickly did that so you can see that I have the first four buttons which uh, are trained for the on signals and the second four buttons which are trained for the off signals so I can turn the relay on by pressing the first of the top four and then 
So you might say that this is a classic fail situation, but the truth is that there are probably multiple standards uh, around when it comes to RF uh, remotes and sockets and even 433 megahertz. So obviously the, the RF reach can only learn a few of them and then it might not even work for some of the stuff or might not properly work for some of the stuff. So I think this, even though it looks like it works for this particular uh, wall socket, it can only switch on the first one and cannot switch on any of the others and cannot even switch them off. So that didn't work for this particular RF bridge. And I think that's going to be a problem when you start purchasing these RF ones because even if you start reading the listings, it wouldn't really say too much about like, you know, what would be the protocol uh, that is supported and you wouldn't even know what protocols are supported uh, by the RF bridge. But fortunately these devices are usually cheap. So just buy one, you try it out. If it doesn't work, well, you can try returning it or just buy another different model. The next thing I want to show you is how you can combine the RF bridge with some of your Sonoff devices uh, using the scenes. And what I'm, I'm going to set up a scenario where I have this uh, door sensor and when this door sensor opens it's going to turn on one of the lights. So for this we go into the scenes and we are going to create a new scene. And I'm going to call this door sensor. And so the condition is that when something happens on the touch, uh, sorry, on the RF bridge. So I, in the condition I say master device and RF bridge. And as you can see here, even though I have quite a few devices set up in the RF bridge, I can only see the alarm ones. So I can see the PIR sensor and the door sensor. So I select door sensor. And as you can see, there is no on or off in, the, in any of these sensors because they basically just send a signal that um, I detected motion, I detected the door opening, uh, I pressed the button. So you can only create uh, scenes like that. So when the door sensor sends a signal, then I want to, for example, turn on my touch. And that's the scene. Okay, it's added successfully, so let's test it. And it works. There is a little bit of delay, but it works. Because the, the sensor only sends a signal when the, the door contact has opened, now the light is on and it's not going to turn off. So of course you can turn the lights off by going into the devices and switching it off, which is here. Or as we have learned previously, you can use this loop timer and set up something like, let's say five minutes off and yeah, that's today probably can move it into the past so you can set up the five uh, the loop timer like this what you can see on the screen and that will automatically switch off the light after five minutes so now it becomes like a motion activated or in this case a door activated light which is going to turn on when the signal is received from the RF device and it will turn automatically off after five minutes Maybe we can just carry on and we will see this happen. The other thing I wanted to do and the other thing I want to show you is how I can use the remote to actually operate another son of device. <clears throat> and that again would be quite useful if we are trying to do something, if we are trying to create a replacement for the son of touch. As I said again, let's say you don't have a neutral, so you can't use these mains uh, son of touch. So you might want to use an RF one. And for the RF switch, I'm going to use this key fob, which has four buttons. So I'm going to use the two top buttons to control this son of basic. I haven't paired this uh, uh, with the RF bridge, so let me do that first. So I'm going to add new device. And because we have seen that we can't use the buttons in the scenes, I'm going to create this key fob as an alarm. So I'm going to say alarm and I'm going to press pairing, press number one and I'm going to rename it. Okay, so I'm just going to rename it button A. Okay, and now I want to add the, the second button which is button B 
and when I click add RF remote it says that this RF bridge only supports up to four devices so unfortunately I have to delete something so let's say I'm going to delete the PRI sensor because um, I, it works the same way as the door sensor so okay I'm going to add and it's going to be alarm again and then let's oopsie let's train okay we co a trained code number uh, code for button B um, button B okay so we are done so we have two arms and actually if I press button A or if, if I press button B you can see that it, it receives and recognizes these signals so but you are, we are not going to use it right here we are going to go to scenes and then I'm going to create a new scene so I'm just go, going to call this button A as well and then in the criteria if I select the RF bridge and button A and the perform action is going to be basic on so that's button A is going to turn on basic on and I'm going to create another one button B and RF bridge button B and the action is going to be to turn basic off okay we have created these scenes so if I press number A basic comes on if I press B the basic goes off so with this method I can control any son of device using a key fob which is configured as an alarm and by the way five minutes has passed so you could say as you can see the ton uh, the touch has turned off the other example I want to show you is combining different RF devices. So for example I, have, I bought this general purpose remote which just has 8 buttons and I've also bought this really really cheap uh, relay board which uh, contains an RF receiver and a relay and these units they usually have a pairing button so there is a button so you just press that button and after that it learns the, uh, uh, the signal. So for example I trained these receiver unit to receive or to trigger on number one button from this remote so you can see that if i press number one then i can trigger this uh, relay so now i have used this really cheap device to uh, listen to this button and i can actually do the same uh, using the rf link so again because i only i can only have four devices i'm just going to delete this one and i'm going to create and i'm just going to create this as a one button device so RF remote and I'm going to train button number one as I said you in some cases you might have to uh, press it twice so the the receiver still works and then listens to button number one but now I can send the same signal from my RF bridge as well by clicking on the button from the in the evening application ah. Sorry, I pressed the button for too long. So let me just do the training again. But as you can see, I'm clicking the button and this relay responds to the signal, which is now sent by the RF bridge. And by the way, this particular relay has different modes. So it has uh, toggle modes and then it also has latch modes, but the default mode is that it only uh, trips the relay when the when the signal is sent so actually this would be an ideal uh, candidate for a garage door opener when you only need to send a short pulse that would be the cheapest possible option for a garage door opener which can be controlled from the evening application of course you can rename this Maybe I renamed this as well to garage. And before you ask, I want to show you that you can use the scenes to also control RF devices, not just the other way around. So I'm going to create a new scene and then I'm going to call this garage. You will see why. And what I will try to do is to use the T1 to control this RF switch down here. So the condition is that when I run the T1 gang and 
let's say when the first channel is on sorry let, ah, let's do channel let's do channel let's do channel one is on then I want to do something in the RF bridge and now you can see that execution only works on button type devices in the RF bridge so trigger only works on alarm types. the execution only works on button types so I only have one button which is this garage and both the device as in the remote and the button is also called garage that's why you see garage twice but that's it okay so when the channel sorry when the channel 1 on T1 is turned on it's going to turn on the relay so let's see how it looks I can do it physically but I can do it in the app as well come on and it works the light came on and then the relay also came on momentarily I'm guessing that's the, probably not the best use case scenario for this one but you can see that the the scenes can control RF devices and son of devices and, and vice versa in the beginning of the video we skipped over some of the functions that are available in the RF bridge itself so when you open up the RF bridge you see the devices you have this countdown you have the schedule and you also have the loop timer which we have seen but uh, now since we have some devices configured we can show how it works and if I do a countdown if I want to create a new countdown the first question is what is the what is the device and again these this function only works on button type devices so I now have the garage so I can create a a timer so when I start this timer it will send out a signal like a garage signal in this case I can make the RF bridge to send out a garage signal after 30 minutes so it's pretty much how it works for other devices of course when when you are doing the same thing like count the timers for um, a Sonoff or a TH1 or any of the other wireless devices you can also specify whether it needs to go on or off uh, at that particular time here in in the RF world because we are just sending out the same signals you can just send out the signal so and the device would decide how it reacts to that signal and pretty much it works the same for the schedule as well so here I have the garage schedule so I mean again this is a stupid example but uh, because I can you know have the garage to open and close automatically at the same time but again if this would control a relay like this one well not this one because this didn't particularly work but other relays then you can train the on button and you can train the off button and you can have schedules created uh, when that RF device would turn on or turn off so again you can use the EV link to set up some you know basic scheduling functions for old RF uh, main sockets I'm not going to save this because I guess you get the idea now and the loop timer works exactly the same way so before you set up the loop timer first it was going to ask for the device that you want to set up but the setup stage looks exactly what it looks for all the other devices again you don't have the option to set on and off because you are just sending out a signal that is my RF link review in a nutshell in summary RF bridge is a device which allows you to control your wireless devices, your regular Sonoff devices and RF devices vice versa. Probably the biggest drawback of this particular unit is that it can only control up to four devices or, uh, or uh, memorize four devices. When it comes to sensors, motion sensors, door sensors, you can only have up to four. So if you want to use the Sonoff to uh, set up an alarm system where you would have more than eight sensors, PIR sensors or door sensors, you would need to purchase multiple RF units. I hope you find this video useful. If you have other use cases in mind, leave a message down in the comment section. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.